I'm super excited about this word today. Let's pray and then I'm just going to jump into it. Father God, I thank you for this mindset series. I pray that we all just adopt the, the mindset of the kingdom of God and that we understand if the word says it, it is true. Lord, we love you, we honor you, and I bless you in your mighty name. Amen. Probably about two months ago, the Lord spoke to me very strongly and said, I want you to start teaching on Sunday mornings and prepare people for what is coming. And so I've just been doing what the Lord has said. That's what you're supposed to do. But the Lord has been speaking to me about different things to teach on and have different people really to share and, and teach. And I really hope that you are a student of the Word of God, reading the Word of God, that, that you are listening to things during the week, the, the right things to get yourself prepared. Now, we've started this five-week series on mindset, and every week I say it's the best week. Well, I'm just going to tell you, this is the best week. When I was going over my notes this morning, I was like, God, this is so good. Now, the Lord started speaking to me about people in this room. When God gives you an amazing revelation, it is not for you to keep. It is for you to give out. Some of you, you may not like making posts on social media. You may not like calling people and giving them words of encouragement. And if you don't like doing it, that's fine. He'll give it to someone else. But God is about to start giving you stuff for the man at the grocery store, for the, the person at the, at, at the restaurant, the, the, the widow that, that lost her spouse five years ago just to call and give them encouraging words somebody in your family that you may not even like you know there's different people you're going to start ministering to that you never thought you would minister to and some people may write books some people you may go to your neighbor's house that you really don't even know love thy neighbor don't even know him but you know you, God is about to use you and to do that I'm just going to tell you going into 2020 you cannot have the mindset of 2019. I'm just telling you, 2020, now I get excited every day, but every year I get excited. 2020, I've never been more excited in my life for what is coming to the body of Christ. So I'm going to just teach today. Please track with me, okay? 2 Corinthians 1, 19 and 20. It says, and, and Jesus is the Son of God, and he is the one who Timothy and Silas and I have preached to you. And he has never been both a yes and a no. He has always only been a resounding yes to us. And all of the promises of God are yes and the fulfillment in him. And as his yes and our amen ascend to God, we bring him glory. Now, let me tell you this. When the Lord gives you something, that is a, a yes. But what do you say? Amen. It is yes and amen. When he gives it, you just say, well, amen. There is no no in the kingdom of God. When God gives you something, it is a yes. I don't know about you, but he gives me stuff all the time that it stretches me to where I'm like, uh, amen. You know, I want to be like, are you sure? Have you hit the right person with this idea? And the Lord's like, no, I want you to do that. Recently, I, I, the Lord told me to send something to somebody. I said, I'm not sending that to them. And the Lord said, send it. And I said, amen. <laughs> I sent it to them. As I was sending it, they were already replying back. I mean, literally, I sent it to them. I said, what are you doing with this, Lord? And I'll see them typing. You know how the three dots are, they're typing. And they said, we've been praying for you. It's so funny that you sent me this because we have been praying for you. And I'm like, really? And God's like, see, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so when God gives you something, it's yes and amen. The word thrive means to develop well. This is what this whole series is about. The Lord developing your mind. I don't care how young you are. I don't care how old you are. God is developing your mind to a greater degree for what is coming. Psalms 119, 147. Before the day dawns, I will cry out for help and wrapping your words into my life. Which means every morning when I wake up, I will have the right mindset. It is your choice if you have the mindset of God every day. 
Don't blame anybody else. We don't do excuses. You have the mindset of God. Now, I wrote something down. Every morning I declare to myself that today will be a great day. I begin with the right mindset, the mindset of the kingdom of God. Then I go into what I am thankful for every day. I have a heart of gratitude towards God, my wife, my kids, my closest friends and family. I make healthy choices all day long, especially first thing in the morning. I start and I finish my day with a great mindset. When any trials or tests comes my way, I learn from them. I'm not going to be negative about anything. I have a made-up mind that I will have a strong kingdom mindset. That's just kind of something I wrote. Start your day with the right mindset. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Now, if there is something you get anxious about, you're going to go through it. Just get ready. But you're going to go through it and, and understand that, hey, what's that thing you said about obstacles? I don't know what you're asking. Okay. Now, well, you, like, yesterday, you, you, kept, you told me something three times about obstacles. Obstacles. The obstacle is the way. The obstacle is the way. The obstacle is the way. Hey, tomorrow, I'm actually doing a mentoring session on mindset. Well, Facebook shut me down two times in three weeks. I'm locked up. I'm in Facebook jail, so I can't do it. I'm like, oh, well, I'll just refund the people who joined it, and I'll go another route. I'll do it on some other social media platform that likes me. You know, I'll do it another way. I didn't get anxious. I didn't get worried about it. I'll refund the people who joined, and I'll do it somewhere else. You can't get anxious about that. You know, if, if your house payment is short, it's going to come through. It's, it's going to happen. Don't worry. Have faith. Psalms 119.15. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. Now, now, understand this. Precepts mean a general rule intended to regulate behavior or thought. I will meditate on your precepts, which means I, the general rule of my life will be the thoughts and the behaviors of the kingdom of God. Contemplate means think profoundly and at great length and to meditate. I will contemplate all your ways, God, which means I will think upon your ways with great length and with great thought, which means my mind will adopt the mindset of the kingdom of God. If you adopt the mindset of the kingdom of God, you will overcome everything Every obstacle and nothing will come up, be able to come against you and throw your day off. Have you ever had something that can throw your day completely off? No, you just get around it. If you want to do something great with your life, you're going to have obstacles every day. And the more you do, the more obstacles you'll have and the more you overcome. And one day you'll turn around and you'll be so strong in God, you'll be like Hercules or something. I mean, you're, you're just going to, that's what God is building in you. It, if you meditate on the concepts of the kingdom, you will function out of a kingdom mindset. This is where you got to grab hold of the scripture that says we can have the very mind that was in Christ. What does the Bible say about Christ? I only do what I saw my father do. Y'all tracking with me? You can have the mindset of the kingdom. That's why, that's why when, when the devil was tempting Jesus, and so I'll give you all this. He said, why, why would I want all this when I got all this? I got the kingdom. This is the earthly realm. I got the kingdom realm. I got both. And so never be satisfied with just the, the natural when you can have the supernatural. Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom the Bible just said he'll give you the spirit of wisdom. If you don't understand something, ask God for it. And the Bible says he will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So if you don't know how to do something, if you don't know how to get through a situation, don't trip. Just say, hey, hey I'm hanging out with my kids or teach me all these new lingo, you know. They said, uh, what you got to know is just, hey, God, I don't understand how to maneuver through this situation 
Give me wisdom and knowledge from heaven. Let me have the kingdom mindset on how to deal with this person, deal with this issue, deal with this infirmity. And then God will speak to me. I remember before I got my hernia surgery, I prayed for nine months like hardcore because the pain was intense. I was fasting. I was praying. I had everybody praying. And one day I just felt the Lord say, go have surgery. I'm going to have surgery. I'm a man of faith. I'm believing for healing. And I feel the Lord say, go have surgery. After that surgery, I have seen how God has used that whole situation. And honestly, if I wouldn't have had surgery, there's a lot of things that never would have happened. I don't understand. I don't understand some things. But when God speaks, you do it. You move in it. You, you got to go through the things of God. James 1, 5 and 6, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, let them ask God for it, who gives to all freely without reproach, and it will be given to you. What's having wisdom? Knowing the mindset of the kingdom of God on a subject or a matter. When people go through stuff, I say, well, what has God said about this? What has the word said about this? When you know the word, you can get through anything. Are y'all tracking with me today? Here's why. Matthew 14. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer and do not be afraid. It is I. And then Peter answered him. I love Peter. He's crazy, but I like Peter. He said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come out on the water. And Jesus said, come. And, and Peter, you know, jumped out of the boat. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And then he began to sink, saying, Lord, save me. What happened? He stepped out on a word from Jesus, had a kingdom mindset. But when the natural realm started influencing his decision, he started to sink. He was doing the miraculous until he let the natural take over the words of Jesus. There's a lot of times that you will have the natural realm in your mind overtake what the Bible says, what the word of God says, and then you will start to sink in life. Then you will get to a place that you will cry out. If you don't let the natural realm overtake your mindset, you will never start to sink. Four of y'all got me. I got you. It's good. I'm telling you what, we're going to believe the word of God. When Peter got his mind off the king, the one who sent out the decree, he began to sink. Never take your eyes off Jesus. Hosea 4 and 6, it says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being my priest. I love this right here because it says if, if anyone, you know, the people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Well, go get knowledge. Well, what is knowledge? You read, you can get knowledge, you can gain knowledge. Any situation, this is what I try to do. Anytime I feel like I'm weak in a, in a subject, I buy a book on it. That's why I buy a lot of books. I'm just, I find a weak area, I buy a book on it. I try to read on it. I try to study on it. Therefore, I do not want to be destroyed for the lack of knowledge. I, you know, when I counsel people, I'm, I'm, I'm sweet, loving, and kind. And a lot of times people will say something, and I'll be like, you're just being destroyed for the lack of knowledge. I got a book for that. Why well, don't I want to spend $10? And I said, you really be destroyed? Like, I don't know how many books I have, The Secrets of the Secret Place by Bob Sorge, I have bought. Moving in the Apostolic by John Eckhart, Wild at Heart by John Elridge. Like, I'll give Wild at Heart to young men. I'll give Secrets of the Secret Place to people who don't understand how to pray. And when I give them that book, they're like, oh, now I have knowledge where I was weak. That's why I love books so much. You know what books are? They're knowledge. And you're going to write a book, Mr. Jerry, so I'll let you know. And, and so when you write something, you get it out so people can glean from your knowledge every one of us have knowledge in this room every one of it like like if I wrote a book on how to do wood carving you might not get it but like if Matt wrote something like that you, you, if you're wanting to learn how to do wood carving and all that stuff he does you would get it from him everybody has knowledge in a situation okay Joshua 1 and 8 it says the book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night I mean, I want you to think about this. How much of the Word of God do you have around you? How, how, much time, how much worship do you listen to? How much positive stuff do you have around you all throughout the day? What are you putting? What, what, listen, what comes in goes out. What comes in, it's real simple, real simple process. And, and when you're always in the Word, you know, like I've got the Word, man, it just eats up all your, 
if you're stuff on your phone, but I love it. The Word is on my audio. I can, I can walk around with my headset all the time. I got a podcast, a YouTube, or the Word of God playing. I love reading, and I really, hey, this is what you need to do. Say, God, help me love to read. Okay? Half of y'all look at me, I'm not praying that well. Ask God, help me love to read the right books, the right things, and I'm always putting things. Let me tell you about my new kick. I'm reading books that have been written over 100 years ago. And I've been reading all of these books that were written um, in the early 1900s or 1800s. And, and they're so plain. They're so genuine and so real and so uh, just authentic. I just love reading the, these books about different things and to see how far that we have gotten away from some things in Christianity to bring them back in. Psalms 119, 911. How can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to your word? With my whole heart, what we know what heart is, spirit, mind, emotions. With my whole spirit, mind, and emotions, I have sought after you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hid in my spirit in my mind, and in my emotions. What does that mean? When something comes against you, God, I've hid your word in my emotions so my emotions will stay solid. Um, God, I've hid your word in my soul that I won't be just distraught when something comes and my spirit will always be strong no matter what happens because I've put the word in all three of them. Proverbs 29, 18, it says, Where there is no vision, people perish. What is the vision for your life? In every area of your life, you need a kingdom vision. You need a kingdom vision for every part of your life that you want to have kingdom dominion in. Okay? A lot of people, they don't read, they don't read the word, so they're not going to have a kingdom dom dominion when it comes to, to the word. You, your, your health may be bad. Do you have kingdom dominion in that? I mean, do you really dominate areas? There's some people, they don't dominate areas in their life because they don't know what the word of God says over that. My wife and I have a strong marriage because we pray over our marriage. We do the little things right. We spend time together every day while we're drinking coffee. We have our coffee dates, you know. you got to build what you're wanting to build by the word of God. I firmly believe that God gives us, hey, I was just writing notes down like crazy. I'm just going to read what I wrote. I firmly believe that God gives us so much vision and prophetic words for our lives it will take us completely turning our minds and our hearts over to him completely to fulfill it. Completely. Our lives to be a mirror reflection of what heaven says about us. Oh, that's good. I didn't realize that. Our lives need to be a mirror reflection of what heaven says about us. Get, listen, getting a prophetic word is easy. Stewarding the prophetic word is not. Unless you have the kingdom mindset. And then it's not that hard at all. When, when the king speaks, see, in America, we have a democracy where everybody has a voice. Boy, doesn't everybody have a voice. But, but, but in some countries, you know, like a theocracy, it, it, like England, you know, where there's a king or a queen. And when they say something, that's it. And so what happens is, is we're in a theocracy. When, when, when Jesus speaks, that's it. You know, he's king of kings and lord of lords. Is he really? Because, you know, if he's really the lord of lords, when he says something... That's it. There's no, that's just what he says. When the word says it, that's it. You can't come back and rebuttal the word. I mean, it's the word. And so understand that getting a prophetic word, I man, we love the prophetic words, but people don't like stewarding the prophetic words until they see completion. The first time you complete an assignment from God, your life is changed forever. When you do something and then he gives you something else and you complete that, you know what I call it? Doing the impossible. He's not going to give you a prophetic word that's going to be possible in the natural realm. He's going to give you a prophetic word that's going to just change your, like, can I really do that? I remember the first time he called me to preach. I'm like, I stutter. I have a problem reading, looking down at the paper. Um, I don't like getting in front of people. I don't like anything. And I don't even have a tie. That's what I told the Lord. And uh, it was just like, Lord, how in the world can I do this? I don't even like reading. I don't even know where my Bible's at. And I was all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, when I finally said yes, five years later, when I said yes, it all turned around. Now I absolutely love it. But it seemed impossible to me. you got to understand you can do everything he said you could do. You may receive it. Oh, this is so good. You may receive it with one mindset. But to gain it, you got to have another mindset. 
and you need a whole new mindset in every season of your life. Psalms 1, 1 and 3, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. My opinion is when, when you get a prophetic word, it is a law to me. It is, this has got to be done. You know, I don't look at it as an option. Sometimes I say, how in the world am I going get, to get it all done? But we do. You know, and this is the thing about tithing. Uh, tithing has never been an option for me. I was raised Baptist with my mom, and if you found a penny on the ground, you're going to find a way to give a tenth of it. You know, I mean, my mom, and that's when I was a little kid, she was just like, I mean, seriously, like if, if I found a dime on the ground, my mom found a dime. Well, you're giving a penny Sunday morning, and I, that's just how I was raised. And my big nanny, big nanny, she would uh, always say that, Jojo, are you praying? Are you reading your Bible? Are you tithing? I'm like, yeah. So when I was a little kid, it was instilled into me that you're going to be a tither. You're going to be a giver. You know, and, and when the word, people try to negotiate things, the word of God is non-negotiable. I mean, like if somebody's sick, it is a non-negotiable in my mind. They're about to get healed. If you're going through a calamity, it is a non-negotiable. What does the word say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do it. You can do it. That's just how I think. The word is absolute to me. Okay, you're, you're going to love this. This is, people are crazy, okay? Genesis 2 and 8. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And then he put a man whom he formed in it. And out of the ground of the Lord, God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Remember that every tree was good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and then the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so here's the thing. In the garden, every tree was good. Every tree had fruit that was good. But there was one tree over here you couldn't take anything of. Adam and Eve had a mindset, a natural mindset, that I want to do the one thing I was told I couldn't do. Listen, if there was a tree called the tree of life, promise you that's where I would be. <laughs> Not the tree of good and evil. Why would you go to that? They had the tree of life that was there, and they didn't want it. People choose the tree of good and evil all the time. Every day. You know, when people are in calamity, because I'm like everybody. You know, I, I got a testimony, and I worked on mine for years, and I did a really good job on it. And, but you know what? I came out of all of that, radically came out of it. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, it's way back here. I'm going towards the tree of life. But some people rather stay around that tree. It makes no sense to me why people don't want to do what God has for them. But a lot of people want to stay back there. It says there was every tree, it was good, pleasant to the sight, which means it was good. And the food was good. And then the tree of life was there, but they still chose to go to the other tree. Why do people go back? Because they can't grasp the mindset of the kingdom of God. Matthew 6 and 10, it says, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Manifest in the kingdom realm. I love this in the Passion Translation. It says, Manifest your kingdom realm and cause every purpose to be fulfilled on earth as it is being fulfilled and spoken of in heaven. Everyone, of, everyone, everyone wants to do something big for God. But you must find the way to make your gifts, anointing, and your work ethic line up in God's timing. And this is the time. Listen, Bill Johnson says this, the will of God is simple. People always say, what's the will of God? What's the will of God? Bill Johnson says, manifest the kingdom of God. What has God spoken to you? What does the word of God say? Do what God says. And whatever he's spoken to you, you do it, and things are going to work out for you. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? When we allow our agenda to override Matthew 6 and 10, you know, it, it destroys the plans that God has for us. But when you dedicate your life to Matthew 6 and 10, God, what, what, your, your kingdom come um, over my marriage, over our kids, over Roar Church, over everything that we do, things just start to happen. You know, my, the mission of your life should be Matthew 6 and 10 over your marriage, your ministry, your business, your kids, everything you know and and when, when when i've started doing that and praying that over over my life and our household things have changed matthew 28 18 
It said, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority of the universe has been given to me. Jesus had it. He said, now you go in my authority, which means you have what? All authority in the universe. And it says, now you go in my authority and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to faithfully follow all that I have commanded you, which means we should be teaching everything that God has spoken to us. And never forget that I am with you every day, even to the end of the age. Every day we're supposed to teach what God has put in our heart. I don't, I don't care who it's to. I don't care if it's your coworker that you don't even like. I don't care if you live alone with the dog. You know, get the dog saved and fill with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Luke 4.43. But Jesus said to them, don't you know that there are other places that I must go and offer them hope found in the kingdom of God? This is why I have been sent. Listen, you are an extension of the kingdom of God. You are an earthly extension from the kingdom. And you will never be truly happy in life until you are functioning in what the Lord has called you to do. What is that? Matthew 6 and 10. Matthew 6, 33. It says, so above all things, consistently chase after the realm of God's kingdom and righteousness that proceeds from him. Then all of these less important things you won't even pay attention to. They'll be given to you with abundance. Did you grab a hold of that? Chase after the kingdom of God and, and the king. Everything else that you think you need and want in life will just be given to you. That's why when people prophesy open doors and suddenly there's things over the past two weeks I wasn't even looking for and a door open. I was like, how you doing, door? I like you. Didn't even pray. Didn't even know the door was there. But it just opened for me. How many of y'all ready just to walk through a door that was so good that you didn't even know was coming? And, and it's, oh, oh, I got a response. Uh, but what it is, is when you seek the Lord, things just, things just start to happen. They just start to happen. Things just fall into place because he has a plan. All right? So the kingdom is ran by the king, and we must bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. He's looking for somebody to be a mirror image of what he wants to do in the earth. And that's you. Some of you want to bring uh, heaven to earth, but you think you live in H-E-L-L sometimes. You, you got so much at your work. You got so much in your family and all of this stuff. No, no, no. Change it. Don't ask for easier. Ask for strength to change the world around you. We must repent and go back to the mindset of the kingdom as churches and as individuals. Most believers have repented enough for salvation, but not enough to walk in the kingdom of heaven and to have the full dominion on the earth. That's why there is a lack of power in teaching in a lot of churches today. We are called to, oh, but let me tell you, there's something changing in the churches. The churches are getting hungry. We are called to live under an open heaven. And, and I really believe that we're going to start walking to a greater degree in just an, an open heaven. And, and when we pray something and we declare something, get ready for it to happen. Get ready for restoration. If you got a prodigal son or daughter or a family member or a friend that's prodigal or somebody's not doing good in health or finances or somebody's just, just floundering in life, just when you start praying, decree that their life's about to be turned around. I'll tell you, he's done it for so many people. He's going to do it for you. Matthew 16, 19. Oh, I was in prayer today, and Miss Hubel walked in and gave me this. Keys. So, Matthew 16, 19, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Let me explain this. If something is locked up, let's just say that you were locked up and your hands were, were, were bound together. And you got the keys of heaven, the keys of the kingdom. It's like you stick it in with a prayer and you unlock somebody and then their hands are free and they're loosed. But what, where, where do you do with the bounds that had you bound? You get those and you bind the enemy in that area of your life. And then you get it with that joker and you lock it up. And you no longer have control over my life in that area. See, this is what you do. You walk around. Who wants some of these keys? Who wants some of these? Uh-oh. Oh, you in depression? That's that depression key. 
All right, I'm about, to, I'm about to get in, and you put that depression key, and you unlock it, and say, come here, devil, and you bind the devil. You ever seen those old school bounds that they would, would bind people with or, or something, and they, they would, like, wrap around their hands, they would lock it? Man, and, and, and you got keys for all types of stuff, but, but you, you're like a Holy Ghost janitor, y'all. You walking around with your keys. <laughs> you got, you're like a janitor. You, got, you know what janitors got? They got a key for everything. That's why janitors walk like this. <laughs> Because they got so many of them. You got the key for everything. When somebody calls you, I got a key for that. Because I read a book on, that's what I tell people. They say, uh, hey, man, will you help me with this? Well, what is it? And, and they'll be like, and they'll give me a subject. I'll be, oh, yeah, I read a book on that one time. And it became my key. But I remember when I read Believer's Authority. Man, changed my life. Because I understood about the authority that we really have. And I got a new love for Ephesians after that. 2 Corinthians 6 and 1. We then, as workers together with him, also plead with you not to, to receive the grace of God in vain. Now hang on. Two things. The word grace means divine influence. The word vain means empty. So then as, as working together with him, also we plead to you not to receive this divine influence of God and treat it as nothing. You've received so much authority, Matthew 28. You've received so much authority from God, but what are you doing with it? <sighs> Blow the dust off your keys. You got kingdom authority. But what are you doing with it? Are, are, are you unlocking anything? Whose life is better because you're in their life? I had a, a friend of mine one time. He called me. He said, uh, hey, man, I need you to talk to this guy. And I said, well, why? Why do you mean to talk to him? He said, because he needs a little um, Jojo Dawson injection. And I, I said, all right. He said, because you'll be loving, you'll be straightforward, you'll be encouraging, and you'll prophesy the word of the Lord over him. He, and he said, all right. And so I talked to the man for a few minutes because of my relationship with this other guy. And, and the thing was, the guy said, I just feel like something opened up in me. Well, what I had was a key. You got a key. If, if, if I remember when I was starting our housing business, man, I was calling gentlemen who had keys. Some of them knew Jesus. Some sure didn't know Jesus. Uh, but the thing was, they had a key that I could benefit from, and they were willing to give me their time. A lot of things in your life is locked up, but somebody that you know has a key. Ask them for it. I call more people and ask them to pray for me. I call more people and ask them for insight on things. I, I've been calling two men at least two or three times a month over the past few months asking for wisdom. I got intercessors praying over certain things, and, and, and they're calling me with, with a key. See, you have so many things in your life that are locked up. But if we live under open heaven, there are reason that they're not unlocked. And what you got to find out and understand is everything that you really need is around you. And sometimes we don't even realize that. That, that you have people inside of your phone, you got their numbers that could unlock everything that you need to unlock. Like I caught a pop lock one time, literally. Had his number in my phone, pop a lock, open my car up, couldn't even do it. He opened it in seven seconds for $50. <laughs> but to him, it was not hard. You've got wisdom for somebody that can set them free in some areas. And so that's it. In this series, you got to understand if you can get the mindset of the kingdom of God, what is heaven saying over my life? What is God saying over my life? I've got some, some friends. I've got some family members that the way that they're, they're living, it doesn't line up with the kingdom of God. And when I say, God, what are you saying over them? I've got friends in ministry. I've had friends call me. I've called other friends in ministry and say, hey, man, look, I think your ministry is getting a little bit off from, from the kingdom assignment. They're like, you know what? I realize that. How can I get back to where I need to be? It's like a chiropractor. They'll get you back to where you need to be physically. You need to be around people who have this or a Swiss Army knife, you know. 
to have somebody who, who can help you. You need the right voices in, in your life. And, and there, there's, there's five keys here, and we'll just call this the fivefold. But you need four or five people around you in your life that you can call at any time, and they can speak into your life, and they can help transform your life. None of us are strong enough to do this on our own. We need people around us. And when we get the mindset, I mean, you think about Jesus. He went and got 12 men to, to come alongside him to help fulfill the mission that he had. Why? Because he knew that he was building strong keys. He, was, he looked at crazy Peter acting crazy, but he knew that dude was going to preach on the day of Pentecost. You know, you, you, you see Paul out there. Man, Paul was just, you know, going after Christians, persecuting them one after another. But God saw something in him that when Saul became Paul could transform Christianity. You know, never give up on anybody and understand when anybody gets the right mindset, they can accomplish anything for the kingdom of God.